Hello, 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 everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time of day this message is finding you. I am here with a Sunday nugget. From 2020 to 2022, I have been doing prophetic nuggets on Sunday mornings. So now I've transitioned from occasional prophetic nuggets um, to releasing messages that I have basically piled up <laughs> all through my different um, notebooks and um, what have you. So today's Sunday Nugget is going to be talking about prophecy and what it is that God does when he speaks to his prophet. And we're going to talk about the purpose of prophecy today. The purpose of prophecy. Because the Bible says, I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. So before we get into that, let's usher in the spirit of the Lord. I always like to usher in the spirit of the Lord before releasing a message. Hallelujah, somebody. So that the spirit of God can come in and give impartation, give insight, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Before the messages go through and as they are going through. So I'm going to just start off with saying, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Healing, you are welcome in this place. Healing, you are welcome in this place. Healing, you are welcome in this place. Deliverance, you are welcome in this place. Deliverance, you are welcome in this place. Deliverance, you are welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Restoration, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place. Restoration, hallelujah, somebody. Restoration, hallelujah. You are welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Hallelujah. One time for the Father. Hallelujah. One time for the Son. And hallelujah. One time for the Holy Spirit. Because it's not by power, nor by might, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. See, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, is welcomed into my home, into my heart, into my mind, and into my spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is welcomed into my car and into the highways and the hedges and wherever it is that I go through the day. Hallelujah. Because when the Holy Spirit comes in, he comes in like a strong tower and he brings healing. He brings deliverance. He brings restoration. He brings the peace, hallelujah, that passes all understanding to those who keep their minds and their hearts stayed through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So welcome in the spirit of God, hallelujah, into every area of your life today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah, and hallelujah. Today, for a devotional scripture, I started to go into something real deep and then the Holy Spirit said, mm, eh, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. The Bible teaches us to delight thyself also in the Lord and he will give us the desires of our heart. Not everybody is seeking financial wealth. There are people who want peace of mind. Hallelujah. There are some people that need healing from their body healing in their bodies. Hallelujah. There are some people that need healing for their parents. Hallelujah. There are some people who need healing, deliverance, and restoration. Hallelujah. In their children. Hallelujah. In their workplace. Hallelujah. In their spouses or in their significant others. Hallelujah. There are people that are out here desiring things of the Lord. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you this. One thing that I desire of the Lord, hallelujah, is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. And hallelujah. And as we dwell and as we bask in the glory of God and as in the things of God, my devotional scripture is coming today from the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Matthew 7, verse 7. So it says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find, and knock and it shall be opened unto you. I'm going to just leave it right there. Hallelujah. I'm going to just leave it right there because it says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock 
and it shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah. Seek and you will find, ask and you will receive, and knock and the door will be opened unto you. So you better go seeking, finding, asking, and receiving because God is the giver of the best gifts. The best gift that God has for us is love. Hallelujah. Because greater love, hallelujah, has no man that this been laid down his life for a friend. Jesus Christ was a sacrificial offering. Hallelujah. Not hallelujah because he had done anything, but he came for the remission, hallelujah, of our sins. Hallelujah. So God was so amazing that he says that, um, you know, in, in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, but whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. My last scripture quote before I get into the message today. Hallelujah. The message today is the purpose of the prophet. Hallelujah. The purpose of the prophet. See, not everybody knows the purpose of the prophet. Hallelujah. Okay. Because see, your necessity, okay, is a house. A car can be labeled as a necessity because we need transportation to get us to and fro where we need to go. But today I'm talking about the purpose of the prophet. Hallelujah. People need jobs to ensure um, things that they have, you know, their bare necessities. Okay. So these are things that are common sense, no brainer things that we actually are wanting and desiring and going to God for. But these are our essentials. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. You know, instead of, you know, uh, the wave about the house, the car, and the business, hallelujah. Sometimes we got to get the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to be a good steward over the house and the car and the things that we have now, hallelujah, to be a good steward over payments, to be good stewards over our credit, hallelujah, to be good stewards over the uh, the just enough, hallelujah, so that when God blesses us with the more than enough, hallelujah, somebody will know how to maintain. So, hallelujah, we need to have some workshops, hallelujah, on uh, different things, hallelujah, because some of the things that people are receiving as, uh, I guess, per se, prophecy, you know, um, is per se, sometimes common sense, hallelujah, sometimes a necessity, you know, so we got to, you know, get a, a clear understanding, hallelujah, of the purpose, hallelujah, the purpose, the purpose, the purpose, the purpose of the prophecy, Abraham's seed, hallelujah, was uh, was subject and was um, basically the recipient of the Abrahamic covenant, which was, hallelujah, somebody, the land of Canaan, hallelujah. But as we get into the word today and we see about the purpose of the prophet, the purpose of the prophet, hallelujah, the foundation of the church is built on the foundation of what? The apostle and the prophet. Hallelujah. Because how many people know that the prophet and the apostle basically almost have same the same functions, just different titles. Okay. Same function, same function, just a different title. Okay. So today I'm going to, I'm going to start off in the book of Timothy. Okay. Before I get into the purpose of um, the prophet. Hallelujah. The purpose of the prophet. So um, I'm going to go to you, come to you today from the book of Second Timothy, chapter four. So, first of all, we have got to know what the book of Timothy was about. Okay, so as we look into the book of Timothy, we know that Paul is the author, and he's writing this book to Timothy. Okay, who was Timothy? Timothy was a pastor in where in Ephesus. Okay, so as he was pastoring in Ephesus. Paul came in to give him some encouragement. So if we go back into the book of Galatians and we see elsewhere, we'll see that, you know, Paul would sometimes come and visit the city or he would come and visit people. And so he would say, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Like I came and we experienced Pentecost, the, we experienced the Holy Spirit and you guys have gone after the things to the right and the things to the left, hallelujah, and the things that they're doing over there and the things that they're doing over there. And they lost their focus and they lost their sight, hallelujah, on 
the things of God. Hallelujah. So the purpose, hallelujah, of the prophet, the purpose of the prophet. Let's talk about Timothy for one more second as we introduce the purpose of the prophet. Hallelujah. Because the scripture in, in, in the book of Timothy, and then I'm going to go back into the Old Testament. We're going to go back to the beginning. The beginning. Yes, we're going to go back to the beginning. So the purpose of the book of Timothy, uh, the second uh, epistle of Timothy, uh, was to give final instruction and encouragement to Timothy. Hallelujah. Okay. So it was encouragement and instruction. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Say the prophet comes to give you encouragement. Hallelujah. And the prophet comes to give you instruction. Hallelujah. Say the prophet comes to give instructions. Hallelujah. And the prophet comes to give you encouragement. The prophet comes to give you instructions and encouragement. Okay. Instructions and encouragement. Hallelujah. Instructions and encouragement because that's the love of God. Hallelujah. God always comes in with instruction and encouragement. Okay. So as we go into, and I um, am reading this particular one, and I'm going to explain this today. Um, part of my message is coming from the King James Version of the Bible. And then I do have a few scriptures that are coming from the ESV. But what I am going to do is I'm going to possibly revamp uh, this particular message and it will all be coming from the King James Version of the Bible. Okay, it'll all be coming from the King James Version because the Bible in the book of Revelation says don't add or take away from the book of the prophecy because if you add to the book of the prophecy you add plagues to your life and if you take away from the book of the prophecy you take your name out of the Lamb's book of life. So be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful from reading from and teaching from and preaching from diluted modified versions of the bible because as they are modified so are the messages as they are modified the messages are modified and the intent is modified as well second timothy chapter 4 says i charge thee before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing at his appearing and his kingdom Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Okay? So this message, um, I've been to so many uh, conferences um, for leadership. I haven't been outside of the city of Cleveland, but um, throughout the years from the 90s to now, I've been through so many uh, ministry workshops. I have been through so many um, prophetic trainings. I've been through so many schools of prophets and I have gone through so many workshops and have yet to have um, had an apostle or a prophet to bring forth this scripture. And so um, I said, well, Lord, uh, the words preach preach. It said, preach the word. Okay. So when I go out in exhortation, I've got to minister what? The word of God, not uh, a professional doctoral dissertation or some fancy soliloquy or some uh, fancy um, written message for the people. It says, plain and simple, preach the word. See, people say that the King James Version is difficult to read or to comprehend and to understand. But it says, I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Okay? So it says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Okay, now I'm going to parenthetically park and go back to uh, Joshua, the son of Nun. If you go to Joshua chapter one, it says um, that as God basically commissioned Joshua, he was to meditate on the book of the law day and night that his ways may be prosperous and of good success. The Lord told him not to turn aside to the right, not turn aside to the left. 
okay? But to keep us focused, hallelujah, on the word of God, the intentions of God, and the things that God has instructed that we do to obtain, maintain protection and blessings, okay? Okay, so the main thing is, and I'm going to parenthetically park here, and I'm going to go and I'm going to, you know, share a little touch of a word from Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ says, if we love him, we would keep his commandments. There are so many people that are in violation of the first commandment of God, uh, having other gods, serving other gods. And all that other nonsense, I'm not even going to get into that today because that's a whole nother can of worms. Hallelujah, somebody. And then it's so funny because everybody's running around here wearing these Pandora uh, juries and all of this stuff from Pandora. Um, Pandora had uh, a whole role in Greek mythology, okay? Let's talk about Pandora. I'm going to do this to join us uh, 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 on Pandora's box when we're going to say yes. Hallelujah, somebody. Because we've got to get into the word of God and we've got to understand, hallelujah, that the devil is pulling out all shots because the devil is seeking to and fro in and out of the earth, seeking whom he can devour. And in this season and in this hour of the church, hallelujah, we are entering into tribulatory phases and tribulatory factors and tribulatory uh, types of uh, uh, events happening in this world. This is, you know, I always share with people when I wrote a season of blessings, the Holy Spirit one night said the word pre-tribulation. As I was getting up, I said, okay, I don't know what a pre-tribulation is, but I just kind of scribbled it off to the side. And um, before you know it, the pandemic dropped, this dropped, that dropped. And so I just got nervous in my spirit. And so I started ministering like crazy online. I don't have a big following, but I'm going to tell you this, um, when it started to happen and when it started to manifest, I was like, okay, God, normally you give me a little bit more advanced notice than two months. You know what I'm saying? And so I was, you know, it's like, you know, what to do, you know what I'm saying? Because I, you know, didn't understand, you know, and don't understand always what is uh, being said to me in my spirit. But sometimes I got to start getting to a point where, okay, this is what I heard in my spirit and I'm just sharing it and I'm just putting it out here. And as I'm sharing it and putting it out here, we'll just see what happens in God. And, you know, cause the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding and all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. So sometimes I just got to put the word out there, even if I don't understand it, because in the right hands that could have done something very pivotal, um, for the things that we incurred. So, and then I've got to work on becoming a little bit more bold because I'm like, okay, God, I'm more introvert. I like to be at home and I like to be, you know, <laughs> reserved, you know, I like to be in, you know, I like to read a book or watch a movie or, you know, I like to type and write a book or something, but, you know, um, uh, 2022 is the year where, um, you know, I've got to break free and I've got to, you know, come forth and I've got to do the manifestations of God because things are not going to get better unless we get some change. Hallelujah. So I'm sharing this information because it is okay to be a coveted prophet. A coveted prophet is a person who desires to be a prophet, but I will talk about that at another time. And called prophets, the ones who uh, are hearing from God, hallelujah, um, without expectation because the gifts and the call of God come without repentance, okay? God chooses who he so ever chooses to um, call to do things for him, you know what I'm saying? And he cho chooses people at random, you know, why? I don't know, but it just is what it is. But um, it says, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So when it comes down, hallelujah, to the purpose of the prophet, the purpose of the prophet, 
the prophet has got to come and say, wait a minute, you're going the wrong way. I need for you to go this way. Hallelujah. The purpose of the prophet, when it says rebuke, reprove, and exhort, see, I've got to basically address the situation and I've got to say, wait a minute, wrong way. But see, people have this tendency, especially this uh, millennial generation where people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. First of all, the Bible says that anything to be in Christ is a new creation. Old things that are old things are passed away and behold all things become new which means i've got to purge off the old person so if you're not purging off the old person and think that you're going to just be a soc or be in christ hallelujah and still have toxic trait and worldly mannerisms behaviors ideologies and thinking then that is not so because the prophet isaiah says god's thoughts are higher than our thoughts and so are his ways higher than our ways okay so we've got to understand that I've got to parenthetically park and make sure that my thoughts, my ideologies, and the things that I'm thinking are lining up with the word of God. Hallelujah. Matthew 5 and 48 says, be ye perfect, even as our father is perfect, which is in heaven. So if I'm not striving for perfection and if I'm not purging off, if I'm going out here getting tattooed and pure stuff like the world, because the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. The Bible says, don't turn aside to the right, don't turn aside to the left. So when I came back after being uh, out of church for a little while, for a season, um, when I came back, I said, God, I need tunnel vision. I need tunnel vision because, see, my vision in the spirit was 2020, okay? My vision in the spirit was 2020. I said, God, you gave me 2020 plus X-ray vision. I said, Lord, make it make sense. So God started to um, give me revelations on people, places, and things. So if you saw me for a season and don't see me no more, because maybe God said shake the dust, baby, and move on as a testimony unto him. Because um, it's so funny, my aunt, uh, her birthday was this week. And this is not a scripture, but I'm going to tell you something that my aunt used to share with me that um, in, in, in when I first got saved and first got into the word of God back in the 90s, she said, baby, many are called chosen a few. She says, but what you've got to remember is that some was sent, hallelujah, somebody and some just went, okay? Some were sent by God. Hallelujah. But some just went. So I said, okay, I used to always say, I said, my, I said, some just sit, some just went. So I said, okay. So then when you get out there and then you see people that are not teaching and preaching the word of God, they're preaching, but it's not the word. Hallelujah. They're preaching, but it's not doctrine. They're preaching, but they're not rebuking. They're preaching, but they're not reproving. Hallelujah. They're preaching, but they are not. Hallelujah operating in the capacity in which God instructs us to do so. So verse three said, for a time will come that people will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they will heap themselves teachers having itching ears. So because I know that this is a prosperity preacher, I know that this person is prophesying this, I know that they prophesying this over here. So I'm going to sit there and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to sit there. And I don't want to tell you the secret. The secret is um, not going to come out through me. So I'm not going to tell you, you might as well go see a psychic because that is how psychics operate. Okay. Not uh, prophets of God. Okay not the prophets of God. It says, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables. Okay. So there's some people out here that have basically seducing spirits. And so what Paul was telling Timothy is that you've got to be care careful of seducing spirits and you've got to stay steadfast and unmovable and preach the word. Hallelujah. Preach the word. Hallelujah. You've got to be indoctrinated. So a prophet is going to be indoctrinated, impregnated. Hallelujah. And filled. Hallelujah. Mentally, physically, and emotionally. Hallelujah. With the spirit of God. Hallelujah. With the spirit of God. Hallelujah. With the spirit of God. So why do we preach the word? Why do we preach the word? Why? Somebody wants to know why do we preach the word? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the purpose of prophecy. It says all scriptures are breathed out of God and profitable for teaching and rebuke, reproof and correction 
and for the training in righteousness that man that the man of God be competent equipped for every good work okay so that's why I'm going to do this um, again because the scriptures that I have from um, uh, when I got my information, it was just like I went on and I was like, okay, let me get this scripture, that scripture. So it was come, everything that I did was coming up in the ESV. So I was just like, okay, um, I couldn't figure out how to switch inside of the app that I use uh, to get it to go to um, King James Version. So I will be doing that uh, revising this message and the purpose of prophecy. And I'll just be talking about the purpose of prophecy and I'll be coming in with scriptures only. See, the scriptures are from God, hallelujah. And the scriptures are to basically redirect us and to correct us and teach us how to live just and right, hallelujah, before God, okay? Hallelujah, before God, hallelujah, somebody. Okay, so it's for correction. When God, when Jesus Christ, hallelujah, the God incarnate, the in, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was with God, and he became flesh, hallelujah, to dwell among men. When Jesus Christ put on flesh and came down and he saw the woman at the well, he said, honey, this is your situation. That is your situation. But what he did to her after he called out her sins, hallelujah, he told her to go her way. Hallelujah. And sin no more. So when he saw a group of sinners that were not in leadership, that were not pastor, pastoral, prophetic or anything, and they were throwing stones, he said, let he who is without sin, hallelujah, cast the first stone. But see, you've got to understand that the Bible teaches the prophets and the leaders that they've got to cry loud and spare not. Hallelujah. And sometimes you have to show and say, because the prophet Isaiah said, uh, was told or instructed by God to cry loud, spare not, and to show Israel their sin. So sometimes you have to say, you who? We've got to choose to change. I have a message called Choose to Change. I'm going to try to get that on YouTube very soon. But we've got to choose to change. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and, and change and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. How can we get healing, deliverance and restoration? Hallelujah. Living the same old messy toxic lifestyles. Hallelujah. People out here serving Greek gods and all this kind of nonsense and will get in a pulpit and say, well, oh, this, oh, that, and oh, the other. And then when people turn around and become a part of these things that they're a part of that are outside of God, God says the first commandment is thou shall not have any other gods before me. The Bible teaches you in the New Testament multiple times that you cannot serve two masters. You will either love one or you will hate the other. The Bible teaches us to be, warns us against covetousness, which is lusting, desiring, and wanting the things that somebody else has. The Bible also teaches us these things. So if I, a lot of people run around and they have this, well, who do they think they is? You know, people want to judge the uh, the ministries that are up here, they want to judge the ministries that are right below them, the right below them, the ones on TV, the ones that are local, the ones that are here. But the thing of it is, is I shared with the gentleman yesterday, I said, the mega theme of the Bible is love. And I said, the, the key component, hallelujah, to obtaining the blessings of God, hallelujah, is to have tunnel vision. I don't care if the pastor of the church is corrupt. Hallelujah, somebody. I don't care if these are half nine finished. Hallelujah, Eli's sons, okay? Out here corrupt in the body of Christ, okay? So what I'm saying is I don't care how corrupt someone is. What you've got to do is take the take your eyes off of those individuals and get your life right through Christ. Hallelujah, because the Bible says that the dead in Christ shall rise. Hallelujah, and then everyone else will be caught up. So in the second coming, hallelujah, of Christ, is your mind, your heart, and your soul ready, hallelujah, to transcend, hallelujah, to be with God, because there are some people that are dead in Christ, and their souls are just going to be uh, emitted, or remitted, or 
basically out there into eternal torment because I have gone to so many funerals and I heard somebody the 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 the, spe, the message the uh, I teach on a regular basis from Second Timothy chapter four. Okay, I teach that a lot. So when I hear somebody teaching a leadership scripture in a funeral it's just like no baby that's not it the dead in christ shall rise hallelujah but we've got to strive for perspective ecclesiastes has some good things psalms got some good stuff to preach at a funeral but not something for leadership because that message is to the pastor that message is to the head that message is for leaders and pretty much leaders only and for leaders to teach that to warn people to stay away from the false prophets hallelujah out here serving all these different kinds of gods and all your uh, idolatry and all of that other stuff and wooden carvings and everything that God said we shouldn't do okay those are the basic commandments if we love God we will keep his commandments okay if we love God but the purpose of prophecy is the same way that I'm telling you that the first commandment is to not have any other gods before you secondly not to covet, hallelujah, thirdly, not to be engulfed in idolatry, hallelujah, somebody, hallelujah, 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 the purpose of the prophecy is to point you, hallelujah, to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah, I'm going to read for you before I close out today, just a few scriptures, so I'm going to go into the book of Amos, one thing that the Lord spoke to Amos, it says, well, one thing that came through Amos is that the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secrets to the prophets, okay? To the prophets. God would come to Solomon in dreams, hallelujah. He would speak to Ezekiel and say, son of man, prophesy, hallelujah, to the false prophets, hallelujah. Son of man, prophesy, hallelujah, to the hard-hearted, hallelujah. Prophesy, son of man, to those dead things, hallelujah, and that they might have life, hallelujah, and that you give them healing, deliverance, and restoration, hallelujah. God would speak through the prophet Isaiah, hallelujah. He would tell him to cry loud and spare not, but then he would also tell the people to be not weary and well-doing. He would tell them, they that wait on the Lord, he says, they will renew their strength. They will mount up with eagles. They'll be able to run and not be weary and walk and faint. God came and he would rebuke them, hallelujah, but he would turn around and encourage them, hallelujah. So be not weary, weary and well-doing, for in due season you shall reap, hallelujah if you faint not hallelujah if you faint not hallelujah Isaiah was that prophet that said Lord if you if 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 you need somebody here I am Lord hallelujah he was like you can speak hallelujah through me and Isaiah went out boldly hallelujah and Isaiah was one of those that prophesied hallelujah the coming of Christ in the book of Jeremiah it says then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. And that is coming from the ESV. Hallelujah. So God says that my words, hallelujah, my words, hallelujah, my words, not some fancy, hallelujah, quotation, hallelujah, not um, some, like I told you earlier today, like my aunt, you know, she would say, well, the Bible says that many are called chosen a few. So when she was giving me a warning, she would say, baby, when you're out here and you go to these churches, you got to know that every pastor that's sitting in these pages, in these places, hallelujah. He said, she would tell me some were sent and some just went, hallelujah. So in a way that was a warning, hallelujah. And so prophets come with warning, hallelujah. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And then this is another scripture that is good that people need to know. In the book of Chronicles, it says, yea, he sent prophets among them to bring them back to the Lord. Hallelujah. Why did he send the prophet? He said the prophet, hallelujah, to require the souls of the people, hallelujah, to bring them back where? To the Lord. Hallelujah. The prophet is sent, hallelujah, to get the hearts, the souls, and the minds of the people and to bring them back to God. Because what does it profit a man?
man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul. So you have the house, so you have the car, but you've lost your soul. Hallelujah. So you've got your dream, everything, but you've lost your soul. Hallelujah. And the blood of everyone that is following the lost souls, hallelujah, the blood, hallelujah, is on those that are trying to lead without having the spirit of the living God engulfed in them. The blood of the people that are following those folk is on their own hands. So am I my sister's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Because I'm accountable for basically putting out misinformation. Hallelujah. I'm accountable for putting out false information. Hallelujah. I'm accountable. Hallelujah. That's the reason why I got back up and preached because I was, I had a dream one night and I swear the Holy Spirit was like, you know, uh, basically sin of, basically was telling me I was in a sin of omission because I was not moving in the word of God. Hallelujah. Because I was not moving in the things of God because I was stagnant. My troubles had troubled me and had me bound. Hallelujah, somebody. So I had to unbind myself real quick. So I said, Lord, how we do this? How I do this? How do I do that? So whereas, you know, it's like, oh, my God, you know. So it's just like when I open up my mouth, I have to speak the things of God because the Bible says love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if the love of the world is in you, the love of the Father is not. Hallelujah. If the love of your Greek and pagan gods are in you, hallelujah, the love of the Father is not. How can I sing, um, uh, basically, how can I sing, hallelujah, and how can I chant, hallelujah, to pagan gods and to other gods, hallelujah, and how can I basically uh, worship, hallelujah, other gods, hallelujah, how can you do that and get up on a Sunday morning and try to serve the God which is in heaven? in violation. God says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Hallelujah. That's not loving God when we're loving on other gods. Hallelujah. That's not loving God when we're worshiping other gods. Hallelujah. And the purpose of the prophet is to come in to get the people from the other gods. Hallelujah. To come to get the people from the psychic. Hallelujah. To come because God, hallelujah, would open up doors. Hallelujah. You got seeking, you shall find, asking, you shall receive, knock, and the door shall open. Hallelujah. I'm walking in expectancy. Hallelujah. Because God told me that if I delight myself in the Lord, He would give me the desires of my heart. Deuteronomy 28 says, I'll be blessed in every area of my life if I keep the commandments of the Lord and if I don't go after these other gods. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you've got to understand this. The Bible says in multiple places that the wicked they do prosper so remember that there was king nebuchadnezzar and there were other false prophets that were out there so we've got to be careful we've got to be mindful because just because you see dollar signs does not mean hallelujah that jesus is in it does not mean that god is in it does not mean so we've got to get focused and prefaced in the word of god so next i'm going to talk to you to, about jonah it says, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it. Okay? Go and tell them. Go call out their sin. Tell them about they self. Hallelujah. And it says, go and do what I tell you to do. Okay? So Jonah's prophetic unctioning was to go and to preach against sin. Hallelujah, somebody. To preach against sin. Hallelujah. Impartation, revelation, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Hallelujah comes to the prophet. Okay? Impartation, revelation. God says in this season, hallelujah, if your pastor, your leader is not telling you that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, hallelujah. If the Bible is not, if the pastor or your leader is not telling you, hallelujah, that sin, hallelujah, has got to go, hallelujah, that we've got to purge ourselves from sin, hallelujah. Grace is given to us as unmerited favor, hallelujah, but it is not an umbrella, hallelujah, for us to persist in sin, hallelujah. Jonah went into the city, hallelujah, and his job, hallelujah, was to cry out against the city, 
and the sin that was in the city. Hallelujah. Much like Abraham and the city of Sodom. Hallelujah. And Gomorrah. Hallelujah. He sent someone in to cry out against the sin and the people chose not to change and swift destruction came on Sodom and Gomorrah. Hallelujah. 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 And hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read to you one or two more scriptures and um, I'm going to read to you one from Chronicles and Malachi, and then I'm going to close out. Malachi 5, and this is from the ESV, not the King James Version. And I will be coming back to uh, retweak this message, and I'm just going to come in where it says preach the word. I'm coming in with strict scriptures, okay, on the purpose of prophets. So when I talk about the purpose of the prophet, I'm going to come in and say, Malachi this, Isaiah that, and I'm going to come in with scriptures, only scripture, and this is what the purpose of the prophet is. Hallelujah. This is what the purpose of the prophet is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day uh, of the, the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers and their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers lest I come and strike the land with a decree of destruction hallelujah nobody warned hallelujah the people that the wages of sin is death hallelujah but COVID has hit Hallelujah. So I'm here to tell you, if we want to change some things, hallelujah, we've got to get into the word. Hallelujah. We've got to choose to change. We've got to walk in the manifestation and we've got to walk, hallelujah, inside of the commandments of God. We've got to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean out to our own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths. Chronicles 20 and 20, it says, and they rose early in the morning, went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And there they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and it shall and it will be established. Believe in the prophets, and you will succeed. Hallelujah. Believe, hallelujah, in those that are correcting you, rebuke, reproving, and exhorting you. Hallelujah. Because you are more than a conqueror through God who loves you. Hallelujah. But you've got to choose to make some changes because the word of God says in Second Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal the land. Hallelujah. If your prophet, if your leader, if your pastor is not telling you, hallelujah, that you have got to get into the word of God. Hallelujah. And change has got to manifest because the Bible teaches us, hallelujah, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that anything that be in Christ is a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Beloved, let us, hallelujah, love one another because love is of God. Hallelujah. And everyone that loves is born of God because he that loveth not knoweth not God because God is love. So we've got to go out. If your past is not teaching love hallelujah if your pastor is getting up and just reading and reading and reading but reading everything but hallelujah the scriptures and the teachings of jesus christ hallelujah and the word of god and the teachings of paul hallelujah that point us to jesus christ hallelujah you've got to get into the word of god for yourself hallelujah you got to get into the word of god for yourself hallelujah because the bible says love not the world neither the things that are of the world hallelujah because jesus christ hallelujah came hallelujah and he laid down his life he says greater love have no man than this than he laid down his life for a friend hallelujah so the purpose hallelujah of the prophet hallelujah is to teach you to be ye perfect even as our father is perfect which is in heaven yes we all sin and come short of the glory of god hallelujah but i thank god for repentance hallelujah i thank god for obedience and spirit i thank god for obedient spirit hallelujah i thank god hallelujah for the word of god so i'm closing out today because i can when you read the bible from genesis to revelation you can go in an excavation and you can just basically teach for hours hallelujah on one given topic because it is an overflow hallelujah but the prophet comes to encourage you hallelujah the 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 prophet comes to console you hallelujah the prophet comes to redirect you hallelujah and to correct you and say you who god's over there 
there, 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 there. Yes, the prophet comes to redirect, hallelujah, the people of God and the hearts and the minds of the people back to God. So what is the purpose of the prophet? The purpose of the prophet, I said all that to say the purpose of the prophet is to point you to God. Hallelujah. Because God says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. You can have all things. Hallelujah. All things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to them per to the purpose. So just because, hallelujah, things look uh, like it looks like the grass is greener sometimes over here, but the love of God is not over there. Hallelujah. Because see, when Jesus was came and was tempted with certain things, he was tempted to use his gift for sadistic purposes. So no, I'm not going to use my gift like a psychic. Hallelujah. Some uh, Jesus was tempted, hallelujah, with material possessions. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus was also tempted uh you know, in multiple ways by the devil. And he, Jesus told the devil in Matthew 4 and 4, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not tempt him. So don't, don't test nor try. Hallelujah. Okay. So as I close out today, remember if you say yes to the Lord, he will say yes to you. And remember that there's a blessing on the other side of your yes. So before my device turns off and I lose this message, I'm going to end now and just say, remember to tune in to say yes on Thursday nights at 9.30 p.m. And to visit me on my YouTube page at Sharita Perry. But get into the word of God, be obedient to the word of God. And remember just to trust God. Hallelujah. Trust the word of God. Hallelujah. And know God for yourself. Okay. Okay. If we love God we would keep his commandments, okay? So until next time.